These blue lights in the background over there, they represent the 12900K that sits in that test bench setup over there. And then these colorful lights behind me, they represent DaVinci Resolve. So the question is, how well does the Intel 12900K do in DaVinci Resolve video editing, live playback performance for loads of different codecs? And we have improved the testing setup this time. So uh, let's uh, jump right into it. This video is sponsored by Artlist, which is also my go to music and sound effects licensing site. Music license from Artlist is covered by a worldwide royalty free license, which includes all projects from personal YouTube videos to high end TV commercials. Once you've downloaded a song with active subscription, it's yours to keep forever. New music and sound effects are added to the site daily, so you'll never run out of choice. There's one affordable annual subscription cost with no hidden fees. And the best part is if you sign up through the links in the description below, you'll get two months for free. So check out Artlist list in the video description below. You might be wondering why do I have these part boxes on the side over here? And it's because Intel's 12th gen, you can have DDR5 or DDR4. So basically kind of like two separate test bench setups. And what we have over here is the DDR4. We are running 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury CL18 3600 megahertz. So two sticks of 32 gigabytes, and then we are running the Tough Gaming Z690 Plus Wi-Fi board, which is DDR4. Now to remove all the other bottlenecks and actually show how good the CPU is, we are running the RTX 3090 by ASUS Tough as well. You know, the same branding as the motherboard. We have 360 millimeter AIO cooler, and we have super fast SSDs from Seagate. If you want to check them out, I'm going to leave all the test bench setup in the description below. Also, if you'd like to see the DDR5 version of this on Windows 11 as well, hit that subscribe button. Videos about that are coming out very, very soon. Also, if you don't know what Intel 12th gen is like for the creators, I highly recommend you check out my full review of the Intel 12th gen. What else we'll be doing is checking out how the hardware reacts to this DaVinci Resolve over here. It's important to note that this is Windows 10 and to fully utilize this CPU, we should be testing this on Windows 11, which is coming out very soon as well. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see that. But not all people will jump to Windows 11. So that's why we're testing it on Windows 10 first. We're also be gonna be testing it with the color grade. As you can see over here, we have a color grade on and off on this, but the whole point for this is to really show the CPU performance. But if you add the color grade, a lot of these effects uh, will actually go onto the um, GPU. So as you can see, I have some curves, two lots and noise reduction added. And these are exactly the same settings that will be applied to like all of the clips that we are gonna be testing. Now, as much as I have done the testing, like, like let me know if you have any tips for me, but what I have done is I've set the timeline resolution to 4K. There's no proxy modes uh, uh, like enabled. Everything is as full as we can. So let's see how we're doing. So first of all, we're gonna be looking at this 4K, 30 frames per second, 422. Now I'm gonna press play and this is super, super smooth. Uh, as you can see, you know, DaVinci Resolve is just awesome. So we're playing back this 10 bit 4K, 30 frames and 25 frames, pretty easy. So I've got no issues over here. If we're looking at the uh, task manager, you can see that our hardware is like hardly moving, hardly doing anything. This is SI over here as well, which means it's less compressed. 422, 10-bit, 4K, you know. If you have 1080p or less, you can know that it's gonna be smooth as butter, whatever you are doing. We're printing back 24 frames per second. Now let's add the color grade and see if we have any difference over here. So timeline performance difference, the 25 frames per second has always like been a little bit like more choppy than 30 frames per second, as you can see over here, or this 25 frames per second. Obviously this is SI from the A7S III, which means it's much less compressed, but even with all this color grade on, it is pretty, pretty, pretty like easy to play back. But as you can see over here, a lot of this like color grading stuff has gone to our GPU that is playing it back over here. Like all of these effects will go on C GPU. So it doesn't really show you how good the CPU is. It's much better to see it without all of those effects because that will show you how good the CPU is. So let's move on to 60 frames per second. First of all, without any effects, 
This is 420 8-bit and the timeline performance is okay. Not as smooth as some of the previous 30 frames per second. It's just probably because it's 60 frames per second and trying to play back as many frames. Let's have a look how the hardware is doing. What is the bottleneck over here? It's interesting. Here now, the GPU is playing it back. This 8-bit and 10-bit 422, this is all on the GPU now. And GPU is playing it back, not the CPU. So if we press play, look, as you can see, video decode is on the GPU. That's much better than Premiere. Premiere Pro didn't like actually show us video decoding on the GPU at all at the moment. But you can see the GPU is doing that. Now let's move on to the 422, as you can see in the background, 10 bits. Now you can see, boom, suddenly the GPU dropped off. It's not decoding this anymore. It's not GPU accelerated. And now, boom, this CPU is playing it back. As you can see, this core is really taking all the load for this and some of the cores here. Are playing this back okay, let's try with the color grade on as well so when we're playing this back this first bit over here this is like now as you can see video decode and gpu 3d effects so all of our cuba calls are doing some work let's try this bit over here so as you can see 4k 60 frames per second 422 10 bit so now the gpu is doing some of the effects whereas the cpu is actually playing back and the footage let's move on to h265 codec so this uh, 420 10-bit h265 is um, pretty 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 easy like playing back no problem this should be on the gpu yep it's a uh, gpu decoding this this part if we move on to this clip this is 24 frames per second h265 this is 50 frames per second both of them are GPU accelerated and very good. But once we move to 422 10-bit H.265, then this should be now played back on the Intel. Yes, look at that. The Intel iGPU has actually hardware acceleration this for DaVinci Resolve, which is insane. Oh, how much like Premiere Pro people should kill for this uh, feature, this hardware acceleration, it's insane. So it's very, very smooth. As you can see, whether you are 422 or 420, the timeline performance is very, very good. All of these clips so far are from Sony a7S 3 Now this is the Canon R5 H.265, 60 frames per, 50 frames per second. Actually, it's 60 frames per second. Let's zoom more in a little bit over here. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job because it is accelerated again on the Intel iGPU. This is fantastic. So if you have that Canon R5 footage, 60 frames per second, 422, um, you know, Canon RAW that you're shooting, this, it's, it's very good. Let's add color grade as well. It's not as smooth now, you know, with the color grade, but now all of these like the GPU and NVIDIA GPU is trying to play that back. But without the color grade, it's very smooth timeline experience. We can press play, it plays it back 24 frames per second. There's a little bit of like green flashing or some kind of artifacts over here. It actually plays it back 24 frames per second. For this, the Intel CPU is pretty, pretty good. No issues or no complaints over here because there's nothing else in the world that can do what this Intel CPU is doing. But as you can see, it takes pretty much all of the power from the iGPU to play back that footage. Let's move on to Canon C200 RAW. So we're going to press pressing play. No problem over here. We can move about over on the timeline. The timeline is super, super smooth. Even at 4K, we're going to be pressing play and it's like no problem if you have canon c200 raw that's no problem so we'll see the metadata as well it's 60 frames per second actually and it's dci 4k let's add some of the color grading as well here now the gpu has something to do it's a little bit of choppy now as you can see with the color grade 
just to give you an idea like what the playback would be like. Regardless, I'm quite happy with this red raw 4K now. Let's try without the color grade at first. Now playback, pretty easy. Like moving around the timeline, I've got no issues playing this back. I'm happy with this. Pressing play, it plays it back 24 frames per second and it all goes on the CPU to playback. No hardware acceleration for this codec. But because it's raw, it's quite easy on the CPU. It's not as compressed, so not as hard to playback. If we add the color grade, let's try the playback now. It's not as smooth, completely fine though, still very, very editable. We're gonna press play, let's have a look. It's completely fine. So to look at the 4K codecs now here, if you plan to do 4K on this setup, even in Windows 10, where like everything is not fully like ironed out in terms of software to communicate with the big and small cores of the Intel 12900K, I'd still say very good video editing performance. If you want to do any 4K editing, completely fine. Even with color grades or without, that's fine. Now bear in mind, a lot of the color grading and effects actually go on the GPU, so that doesn't show you how good the CPU is. It depends what GPU you are planning to run on this. So now let's move on to 5K. The timeline is, you know, okay. There's not a lot of movement, but... Okay, and there was a little bit of a struggle there with the 5K. Let's have a look at the hardware. Wow. Okay, the CPU is pretty much maxed out playing back this 5K. As you can see, it jumps to like 100% to like 90%. So we're almost there to play back the, this 5K footage, which is interesting. Let's try adding color grade as well. See what happens then. Whoa, it took, it's struggling sometimes. It's really, really struggling to play that back. It's not as smooth, but I'd still think it's kind of okay. Bear in mind our timeline resolution is 4K here. Let's move to 6K B-RAW. I assume there is no issues over here. Even with the color grade, you can see it's pretty, pretty smooth. It's like pretty much native codec for this DaVinci Resolve. So any potato will run this codec because it's such a good, like easy codec to play back. See? No problem over here. Let's try 6K Red Raw. Take the color grade off. So at first, timeline performance. It's okay, but it takes a little bit of time. It's not real time playback. Like as I'm scrolling or scrolling through this playhead, it's, it, it's smooth, but it's not keeping up as I want this. So let's press play. As you can see, it's a little bit choppy, see? It says 24 frames per second, but actually it's it's choppy. Like, th that's the funny thing. On Premiere Pro, we played this back much better than on DaVinci Resolve here. The playback was much, much, much easier. Have a look at the Premiere Pro one if you haven't seen that video yet. See, CPU 100% utilized. Let's see if we add like the effects and color grade as well. So we're pressing play. It's struggling now. Really struggles pl to play back this footage. Everything is 100% on the CPU and the GPU is actually working quite a bit as well. So interesting. Let's see if the timeline resolution is 1080p, if that changes anything. So now the timeline resolution is 1080p. Let's press play, see if it's any different. No. The timeline resolution doesn't change the fact how DaVinci Resolve is playing back this codec. So I'd still re leave the timeline resolution to um, 4K. So 6K Red Raw, a little bit hard to play, play back. Let's move on to 8K. This is Canon Raw 8K, okay? First of all, without any color grade, this is super, super smooth. It's insane. But to be honest, even the Ryzen 5600X, which is like third of the cost of the CPU, uh, still plays it back very, very well. Uh, similarly to this, so I'm not surprised that it plays it back. So Canon RAW for this DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve loves that. No problem playing it back over here. Let's add a bit of color grade as well. 
So that's with noise reduction, two lots and curves. No problem. Timeline performance is a little bit more choppier now. But hey, completely editable. Much smoother still than the Red Raw 6K footage. So I'd say no problem over here. Red Raw 8K over here. Timeline performance. Okay. Funnily enough, I'm sure Premiere Pro was much smoother at this 8K RAW playback. I think DaVinci Resolve just doesn't like the red RAW aspect of it. But when we press play, it seems to be playing it back 24 frames per second. And even our CPU is not fully utilized, so there is a still a bit of headroom. We're playing it back. No problem. Now, I do think that if you're doing this red 8K editing, maybe consider editing it in Premiere Pro, you know, whatever you want to do. But in Premiere Pro, this like timeline performance scrubbing through was much better. Regardless, is 8K editing possible? Yeah, absolutely. Lastly, 12K. Seems like no problem over here. We're playing it back. No issues. And scrubbing through the timeline is super, super easy as well. Let's add the color grade. Scrubbing through 12K. Works, pressing play, completely fine. No problem over here. So the conclusion over here, pretty much any codec on DaVinci Resolve is editable and is completely fine with this Intel 12900K. The only exception I'd say is if you go beyond 4K on Red Raw codecs, they were a little bit, let's say, hard to play back and Premiere Pro played those codecs back actually much better. So feel free to check out my Premiere Pro timeline performance with this exact same setup. Any 4K codecs you might be editing with when you're coming especially from mirrorless cameras or any 4K codec is completely fine with this CPU. Just if you're doing a bit of color grading and adding effects, then it really comes down to your GPU rather than the CPU. Now let's have a look at the hardware, how much uh, like power did we use? Now the interesting thing is when I did this test on Premiere Pro, our maximum power consumption from the CPU was 217 or something like that, over 200 watts. So as you can see, DaVinci Resolve is much more exactly the same configuration. It's much more power efficient, which is interesting. Clock speeds are about the same and the temperatures are actually lower. Premiere Pro was 81 degrees and actually it was probably slightly cooler in this room by then because the room's just been heating up um, now. So DaVinci Resolve, much more efficient in terms of temperatures and power consumption. So if you have any other suggestions, which codec should I be using or testing for some of this hardware on this channel, then let me know in the comments below. If you have any other tips or suggestions from you, I'd love to hear from you as well. So we'll meet you down there. Likes if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you would like to see more and I will see you in the next one. All the test bench setup parts are linked below as well if you're interested. So. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.